Hello everyone and happy Pride! I know we're a little late into the month, but I really wanted to do a video to share with you some different YA titles that feature LGBT plus uh, heroes written by LGBT plus authors. So I picked out a few titles that I think you'll really enjoy. All these books can either be found through our physical library, which you can look at through our website, or on Overdrive and Libby. The first book I want to share with you is called Darius the Great is Not Okay, written by Adib Quran. Now this book is a personal favorite of mine. I've read it twice already, one through audio and one through physical reading. I even own my own physical copy of it at home. I like it so much. It was a big award winner a year or so ago. Um, it's definitely worth all the hype. The book is about a boy named Darius who is traveling to Iran for the first time to visit his mother's family there. It's an overwhelming trip for him, especially since he's dealing with depression, a disapproving dad, and a pretty terrible social life. Once he gets to Iran, he gets to know his mother's family, including his ailing but still formidable grandfather, his loving grandmother, and lots of other relatives. He also meets one of his family's neighbors, whose name is Sarab. And Sarab is a really great friend to him from the start, even though they know very little about each other. But Sarab kind of teaches Darius the ropes with people his own age. From the start, Sarab is a really good friend to Darius. He brings him to play soccer with his friends, um, and make sure that they all speak English around him since he does not know how to speak the language there. Um, he really helps Darius fit in and feel like a part of the Iranian culture because honestly Darius feels very separated from this side of the family since he grew up in America. But Darius finds that Sarab is one of the best friends he's ever had and that it's very easy to be himself around him. And so with this developing relationship he comes to find out more about himself because he's allowed to be himself. It's going to be a life-changing trip for him, and he just kind of hopes that all those changes carries over when he goes back home. The second book that I am going to share with you is called The Music of What Happens by Bill Koningsberg. This book is about two boys. First is Max, and Max is a pretty chill kind of guy. He's openly gay, and everyone who he knows and cares about is really okay with it, so it's never been an issue. They accept him for who he is, and he's pretty chill with it. But he's also got a secret. He had an encounter with an older kid that he'd rather not think about ever again. And then there's Jordan, who's pretty much the opposite of chill. He's never been kissed, and he's hoping for Mr. Right. And his secret? Well, he's got a mom who's spiraling out of control, and pretty much he's the only one who's stopping his family from falling completely apart. So Max and Jordan couldn't be more different. And yet over the course of one summer and a series of events, the two will have their paths crossing. They both got fears to grapple with and risks to take if they're going to get what they really want. The next book I want to share with you is a fantasy one, and that is called These Witches Don't Burn by Isabella Sterling. And it is about a girl named Hannah who is a witch, like a real honest-to-goodness witch. She's considered an elemental witch, which means she can use the power of fire, water, air, earth. And even though she lives in Salem, Massachusetts, arguably one of the witchiest places in the country, she still has to keep her magic a secret. If any witch is caught using their powers by a non-witch, they could lose their powers forever. So to stay out of trouble, Hannah has been avoiding her ex, hanging out with her best friend, and working at her part-time job. But dealing with her ex is the least of her problems when a terrifying blood ritual is found in Salem. Evidence of dark magic starts creeping up everywhere, and Hannah is almost positive that there's a blood witch in their midst. But her coven is not so quick to believe her. So in the end, Hannah ends up having to work with her ex in order to find out just what is going on and what the truth is. Next book I want to share with you is called Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. It's about a girl named Ramona whose life was changed forever when Hurricane Katrina hit. Since the hurricane, it's been Ramona and her family against the world. Ramona is sure of three things. She likes girls, she's devoted to her family, and she knows she's destined for something bigger than the trailer park she lives in. She's juggling multiple jobs, her flaky mom, and her well-meaning but ineffectual dad. So she's pretty much the parent of her own family. And now her sister, Hattie, is pregnant, so the pressure is on her even more to take care of the family. So the return of her childhood friend, Freddie, brings a welcome distraction. Freddie starts inviting her to the local pool so they can swim and hang out together. But the more that Ramona spends time with Freddie, the more she starts feeling her relationship with him shift. Which, of course, is fairly surprising given that she thought she was only into girls. But it could be that she is also into boys. So Ramona has to struggle with her family, her new relationship, and who she is in general. And it is this summer that she will figure that out. 
The next book I want to share with you is another personal favorite. It is a graphic novel, and it's called The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This book is about Prince Sebastian, whose parents are basically forcing him to line up a marriage and soon. But he has other plans. Prince Sebastian doesn't care about getting married. What he really likes to do is a big secret. And that is, at night, he likes to dress up in the latest fashion and go out onto the town as Lady Cristalia, the hottest fashion icon in Paris. To do this, Sebastian's secret weapon, and also best friend, is the brilliant dressmaker Frances. She's only one of two people who know the secret of Lady Cristalia. But the thing is, by being a secret weapon for Prince Sebastian, that means that she is a complete secret. Frances has dreams of having her fashion worn all across the world, but because of the secret she keeps with Sebastian, she isn't able to share her fashion with anyone. How long will she be able to hold back her dreams in order to keep Sebastian's secret? The next book I want to share with you is called Ash by Melinda Lowe. So this is a retelling of Cinderella, and it is about a girl named Ash who, as per the Cinderella story, uh, her father dies and she is left at the mercy of her evil stepmother. Consumed with her grief, Ash falls back onto the fairy tales that her mother used to tell her as a girl. She dreams that the fairies will take her away someday, away from her pain and struggle. Eventually, she does capture the attention of a dark and dangerous fairy, and Ash thinks that her dreams might finally be coming true. Around the same time, though, she meets the king's huntress, Keza. Instead of chasing fairies, Ash learns to hunt with Keza. Though the fr friendship is new and still just blossoming, she can tell that there's something special about it. It reawakens Ash's capacity for love and to live again. But the fairies have already laid claim to Ash, and so she must struggle to make the choice between her fairy tale dreams and the life that could be laid out in front of her with Kezia. The next book is another graphic novel, and that is called Bloom, written by Kevin Panetta and illustrated by Savannah Ganucho. Ari is done with high school, and all he wants to do is to move away to the big city with his band, but his dad would rather have him stay at home and help with the struggling family bakery. Though he loved working in the bakery as a kid, Ari cannot fathom a life working with loaves of bread in hot ovens all day. But while he is interviewing candidates for his replacement, he meets Hector, an easygoing guy who loves to bake almost as much as Ari doesn't. As they become closer over batches of bread, love is ready to bloom. That is, if Ari doesn't ruin everything first. And the last book I'd like to share with you is called Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. This story is about Suzette, who comes home to Los Angeles from her boarding school in New England. When she comes home, she's not sure if she'll ever go back. L.A. is where her friends and family are, including her crush Emile. And her stepbrother Lionel is there, and he's been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, so he needs her more than ever. But as she settles into her new life, Suzette finds herself falling for someone new. Unfortunately, it's the same girl that her brother has fallen in love with. When Lionel's disorder spirals out of control, Suzette is forced to confront her past mistakes and find a way to help her brother before he hurts himself, or worse. So those are some great titles to read for Pride Month. We have lots of other LGBT plus titles to look at both in Overdrive and through the library website. So I hope you find a book either on this list or in your search that you can enjoy and love this Pride Month. Take care. Bye.